All right, John Wilner joins us for a few minutes. Wilner Hotline, the man never sleeps, even on vacation. He's in the middle of somewhere in America doing his thing because the story like this with the Pac-12 imploding and all these moving parts means you can't take any time away. So I'll just get right into it. What is fact to you today uh, of, of what is out there a week into this that you believe, Brad, this is where it's going to end up in some way, shape, or form? Well, I mean, the facts to me are that there is no immediate pathway to the Big Ten for Washington and Oregon. They may get there eventually, but I think we're a couple years down the road, or that's a couple years down the road. Uh, it's clear to me that the Big 12 is considering uh, whether to uh, extend invitations to Arizona, Arizona State, Colorado, and Utah. But I don't know that the Big 12 has concluded that that is definitely what it wants to do. And I don't know that there has been substantial uh, interaction between Big 12 representatives and uh, folks from those schools. So things are, you know, with expansion, things tend to move slower sure. than people would get the sense by social media, right? Because there's a lot of reports out there, some are true, some are not. But things tend to move slower behind the scenes because there's legal considerations. Uh, you got negotiations going on at the presidential level with TV networks. So my guess is we're we're still, uh, you know, I don't think anything's going to happen this week. Put it that way. What is fiction to you that you look at this and you see reports and you hear all the conversation? What do you just look at and say that stuff's totally not true? There's no way that that's happened. Uh, I think that any reports that link Pac-12 teams to the SEC is fiction. Uh, I think that any, I, I think any reports that, that the Big Ten is about to make a move, another move, is fiction. I think the, the Big Ten is going to hunker down for two years and then try to get Notre Dame and whatever team it wants to bring in as a partner with Notre Dame. Um so those are those are the big ones, right? I mean, there's a there's a lot of little stuff. Oh, these this team is talking with, or this school is talking with this conference. But the big ones are, you know, what are the SEC and Big Ten thinking about? And and I don't think right now the SEC is considering anybody uh, west of the Mississippi. If the SEC were to make a move, it would be into the ACC. Okay, and let's get to the ACC. I know Jim Phillips a little bit from him being here a long time ago in a different situation with Bill Frieder as an assistant coach. He's at the ACC. There's these rights negotiations or rights deal, I should say, that they have in the ACC that it has a long term to it. My understanding, John, is if enough ACC schools, the number I was told was eight, if eight schools or more come and say, we want out, they can get out of this deal. They, yeah, lawyers are going to have to get involved. You wrote about Gonzaga. I'm looking at all of this and saying, you know, a basketball, I'm not saying you don't do football, but a basketball type of league that has Carolina, Duke, Arizona, Kansas, Gonzaga, you can go sell that to anybody. And the NCAA is not going to be in charge of football at some point. The NCAA is in the business of doing tournaments. That's what they do. And March Madness, a big tournament. Is there a path, John, that you see that maybe people tilt their head and say, what if basketball is what we build our foundation on? Yes, football is still part of it. Or does that make no sense to you? It makes some sense. The big money is still in football. Even if you had some kind of super conference that included Duke, Carolina, Kansas, Arizona, Gonzaga, that's not a huge revenue driver compared to your football versions, right? So I think that there is a there's an outcome, right? If we're looking at the entire spectrum, there's an outcome in which the Pac-12 expands its basketball offerings and maybe goes after, you know, uh, Gonzaga and St. Mary's. And then there's a partnership with the ACC. So those schools are playing Duke and Carolina, but that doesn't necessarily solve for the football piece. And there are fewer options for the football piece because the valuable properties are already spoken for. The ACC television markets, if we're just talking television markets in this new negotiation, this new, whatever it looks like, is television market the number one line item? Because that leads to the revenue, which always is the number one line item. Television markets, speak to me on that and where the Pac-12 is leaning, looking. 
Well, television markets mean something, but not what they once did. You know, when the Pac-12 expanded, uh, what was it, 11 years ago and added Colorado and Utah, a lot of the calculation was based on how many cable subscribers were in your footprint, and that would determine your valuation. It's not about the raw number of cable subscribers anymore. Now it's about uh, big brands and the number of schools in your conference that can drive TV ratings and occupy those prime broadcast windows on on over the air television, right? Who's going to be on Big Fox or ABC at eight o'clock Eastern, right? Those are your big revenue drivers. That's why the Big Ten wanted SC, right? And why the SEC wanted Texas and Oklahoma. So that's the main issue right now for the Pac-12 and and for the ACC and the Big Twelve. There there are no you know, over the air TV revenue uh, ratings drivers available for those conferences because the SEC and the Big Ten have taken them all up. Okay, Big 12 and all this. Big 12 go away. Big 12 gets Pac-12. Where do you think the Big 12 is in all of this? Well, one of two air, one of two directions, right? Either the, the Big 12 ends up gobbling either four or six Pac-12 schools and is the number three conference or the Pac-12 and, and SC, uh, ACC form a partnership that marginalizes the Big 12, right? It's now a race for third, you know, strategically third behind the SEC and Big 10. And that's either a combination of the Pac-12 and ACC, or it's the Big 12 gobbling up some, some Pac-12 schools. So we'll find out where, where that's going to stand here in the next couple of weeks. Are you convinced that Oregon and Washington are off the market? as we sit here and talk today? No, I think they're off the market for the Big Ten, but I think they would strongly consider moving to the Big 12. You know, if they don't feel like there's a great option for sticking in the in the Pac-12, then they go with the Arizona schools, Utah and Colorado, or the Big 12. You've got the Big 18, and that's a pretty substantial conference, uh, you know, that, that would, you know, put the Pac-12 out of business and have a strategic advantage over the ACC. A lot has been written, a lot has been said, and I don't see much at all about Stanford in all this. I see Oregon State's left out in the cold. I see Washington State's left out in the cold. Cal be left out in the cold. I've seen a lot of that. Nobody's really said much about Stanford. Why is that? Well, I think there's some wait and see issue with Stanford. You know, Stanford is a very unique situation, right? Because the football pro program does not have a ton of brand value, right? They don't. They don't drive TV ratings. They don't sell out their stadium. Right. But right. Stanford has so much value in other ways with yeah. its academic reputation. It's immense amount of money. The access it would provide to Silicon Valley, the alumni base in the Bay Area. So there's a school. One school of thought says Stanford ends up getting completely marginalized, potentially like Cal and Oregon State, and Washington State. There's also a school of thought that says Stanford will end up in the Big Ten as a partner with Notre Dame to create an 18 team league because the Big Ten would want access to Silicon Valley. And it has a alumni alumni in, in the Bay Area. And Stanford has so much money and brings so much prestige. You know, Big Ten presidents would love to have Stanford in their conference. Right. That's so Stanford is almost in its own little world on this whole realignment wave. How much does Phil Knight have? as an impact on all of this? I, I am skeptical that he has a whole lot of impact on what the SEC or Big Ten might be thinking. I, I do think he will have some impact on kind of what the Pac-12 can come up with in terms of options for staying together. And, and there's some thought that this is, he looks at this as a legacy play, you know, keeping the conference together. He, he obviously is, you know, incredibly vested interest in Oregon, but Phil Knight went to Stanford for business school. He wrote the, the business strategy for Nike while attending Stanford Graduate School of Business. He is Stanford's like number two donor, right? So he also cares about Stanford's future. And maybe the combination of, of his, you know, uh, his sentiment for two out of the schools in the Pac-12 would prompt him to try to do something to help save the conference. John Wilner with us for a couple of minutes. He's taking time out of his vacation somewhere here in America while working on this massive story. A couple other things, I'll let you go. Uh, walk me through, you've written about this on the Wilner Hotline, which we carry, of course, on Sports 360, but 
As we sit here and talk on this Thursday morning, the 7th of July, the idea of for the Pac-12 bringing in schools like San Diego State, Fresno State, UNLV, to me at least, it feels like a step backwards. Where do you think that lies today? Well, I mean, there's no question it's a step backwards because there's no schools that better the, the conference competitively and financially. They're all they're all accounted for. Uh, so it's about what is, you know, your the best of suboptimal options, really. And to me, uh, if they're going to expand, they have I think they have to have San Diego State involved because otherwise they don't have a campus within like 300 miles of Los Angeles. Right. They might as well be the Big 12. Well, yeah. Or the Conference USA when it comes to L.A. And that's where all the players are. So I think they would have to include San Diego State. And then to me, it makes some sense to think about getting into Texas and SMU is available. SMU didn't go into the Big 12. It's a private school. Obviously, it's affiliated with the Methodist Church. But if you want to basically move forward and break new ground physically and, uh, you know, uh, competitively, right, going into Texas is is an answer. And SMU is the most gettable school in Texas. Okay, Pac-12 chancellors don't want to be involved with the religious affiliation of TCU, John? They might, but TCU is already in the Big 12, right? So TCU would have to say, are we better off in the Big 12 or the, the Pac-12? SMU is in the American, which has been devastated by the loss of UCF, Houston, and, and Cincinnati. So that's why I think SMU would be much more willing to listen to the Pac-12 than, than TCU might be. But you could also try to make a raid and get both TCU and SMU. Correct, correct, which then brings you the Dallas market and brings you Texas in a big way. Then you go after Houston. Now you have the whole state basically in Texas Tech. And you have if you're getting real market. aggressive, that's what you do. Yeah. And the, the thing is, not to interrupt, but if they're going to get aggressive, they ha ESPN has got to be the force behind that. The ESPN has got to basically be whispering the dollar amounts for those schools so they get a feel for what, what's at stake. Two other questions. Notre Dame, where do they fit in all of this? They're the next – everybody's waiting on Notre Dame. That's the Big Ten's next move is they have been trying to get Notre Dame for decades, right? And Notre Dame makes so, so much sense. But Notre Dame also covets that independence. And the question is whether the Irish decide as consolidation continues, are they better off staying independent or are they better off getting into the Big Ten? There are some people who believe that the move to get SC and UCLA was entirely to set the table for getting Notre Dame. Mm -hmm. And so – you know, based on the, the terms of Notre Dame's current contract with NBC, we probably will know in the next 18 months whether Notre Dame is going to make the jump to the Big Ten. And if it does, probably you need to have a second team to, to keep it even. And the question becomes, who's that second team? And also, does the Big Ten go to 20? Does it add three teams with Notre Dame or just one? Okay, last question. That is, for fans here in Arizona that believe that it's President Crow and Robbins and that that's how this is being driven. That's not how this is being driven, right? This is, is this executives at the highest level of television networks talking to presidents of universities saying this is how it's going to go. We've already seen that Michael Crow was completely incompetent when it came to the Pac-12 network and his support of Larry Scott. So there cannot be any, any way, shape or form that Michael Crow has a say in any of this, right? Well, Michael Crow has, certainly has a say in what Arizona State decides to do. But I think that, you know, uh, I have a hard time seeing the Arizona school split up, right? I don't know how the, how the Board of Regents would feel about that. So Michael Crow has some say, but ultimately, you know, the TV executives are telling the conferences, basically, here are your valuation numbers based on, you know, X, Y, and Z scenarios with your membership. And you know, uh, the Pac-12 is going to have a number and it's going to present that number to the Arizona schools in Colorado and Utah and Washington and Oregon. Here's what, if we stick together, here's what we're looking at. Meanwhile, the Big 12 is running the numbers with its media, uh, you know, experts and saying to the four corner schools, well, here's what we're looking at if you come over here. And so that will, I think, largely dictate how this plays out. How does this play out? Boy. If I had to bet, 
Yeah, uh, I, I guess. Don't, I, would, I don't want you throwing your money away. You're on vacation. Come on. I'm betting. Uh, so here's what I'm doing. I'm betting 35 cents because I've thought this through. I'm betting 35 cents that Pac-12 partners with the ACC. Mm -hmm. I'm betting 35 cents that Pac-12 adds schools, key, holds together and adds a couple schools. And then I'm betting 30 cents that the Pac-12 implodes. So it's pretty close to one third, one third, one third, you know, <laughs> go be a dad, go be a brother, go be a family man, get out of here. I know you're, this will all be dated and over in like five minutes, but I do appreciate your time. Thanks. Thanks and time for having me, Brian. There's John Wilner, Wilner Hotline. Check out all of his content. We're back with more after this timeout.